soul with it. What's going on everybody, Dialyrix TV back with another video and I would like to discuss with you all some comments that were made by former NBA player Stefan Marbury and just give you guys my thought on the comments that were made by Stefan Marbury. So here's what he had to say, he did an interview and he says, I see so many people saying so many great things about Kobe and they hated Kobe, which is facts and I'm like, hmm, this is interesting. You don't need to get guys like LeBron to speak and talk about, you know, what they're going to carry and all of that. He don't need you to carry his legacy. His legacy is already his legacy. You don't do that. Carry your own legacy. Keep it popping and going. You're not a real Laker. The real Laker fans are real Laker fans and real Laker players. When you hear guys saying this type of stuff and doing these type of things, I'm just wondering what is it for? So if you guys would like to read the entire article, the link is in the description box. Also, the audio is below as well. But no beating around the bush. We're going to get straight into it. Is LeBron James a real Laker? At this moment, I would have to say absolutely not. You know, he has to prove himself before where he could sit at the table with the Laker greats such as Magic Johnson, Kobe Bryant, Wilt Chamberlain, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Shaq, Jerry West, etc. Bro, like you gotta earn it. Like you gotta earn it, and that goes for any player. Whether we would assign Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, Kevin Durant. Kawhi Leonard and all the future players that the Lakers could potentially sign in the future you know I don't care who you are I don't see what the backlash is all about I don't see what the fuss is about Anthony Davis would even have to agree that he's not even a real Laker at this point you know so what makes LeBron James any different I think a lot of LeBron fans which is just about every casual fan in America will try to guilt you into believing that due to LeBron James history and what he's done in the past with the Cavs and what he did with the Heat that it automatically connects to what he's doing with the Lakers right now but it's not like you know what you did in the past it's like what have you done for me lately you know it's not about what you did back then it's what you can do now if a lot of players never won a championship or proved themselves with the Lakers for a long span of time and they was drafted by the Lakers and things like that then they probably wouldn't have been considered real Lakers either you know so I agree with Stephon Marbury if LeBron James wins a championship or two and accomplishes a lot you know in between that time and in the fashion that he does it then possibly the conversation could change, right? But it's hurdles that you have to go over, that you have to go through before you can get a statue in front of Staples Center, you know, and you're respected amongst real Laker fans. That's just how it is. Personally, I'm just not a LeBron James fan. Like, I'm just not. You know, people act like it's a crime to not be a fan of someone. I'm just not. You know, I love the Lakers. I have a Jerry West jersey. I have Kobe Bryant jerseys. I have an Anthony Davis jersey. I even got a Jordan Clarkson jersey. I got a jersey because I like Jordan Clarkson. But you will never see me wear a LeBron James jersey you know i'm pretty sure that there were celtic fans who didn't want Kyrie irvin on their team you know i'm pretty sure that there were miami heat fans who didn't want lebron james on their team you know when he came except for the diehard lebron fans you know who are pretty much bandwagon fans you know but then there'll be fans who would try to guilt you and try to use guilt tactics and to shame you into feeling wrong about not being in full support of lebron james or lebron being on the lakers but when you talk it to a logical diehard fan like myself you can't use those tactics on me because i already know you're speaking from emotion from a narrative that was created by mainstream media like they say how could you be a real lakers fan and not support lebron and he's helping your team win bruh like you know i remember genie bus saying the exact same thing with you know when lebron first joined the lakers and i'm like okay if it's about individual players then like i said before remove the players names off the back of the jerseys remove lebron james off the back of the jersey and business wise she's not going to do that she knows she's not going to do that from a marketing and business standpoint because the name on the back of that jersey the name james carries weight lebron not the first player to wear number 23 with the lakers okay like then people will say oh well stefan marbury he was never on lebron level and he's hating on lebron stefan marbury wasn't that great of a player etc but how idiotic is it to basically say that simply because this man you know have a difference of an opinion because he wasn't on the same level as lebron that he's not entitled to make his comment like that doesn't even make sense you know then there are fans who will be like oh you know lakers fans are just so ungrateful the lakers were irrelevant the last seven years i'm like bro like do you realize like that's when i knew like you could smell the actual casual fanism 
reeking through their pores, bro. Like, win or lose, the Lakers will always be relevant. First of all, the Lakers have always supported road games, and the fans have always dominated in the stands on the road. Even when you watch our summer league games before LeBron James even thought about joining the Lakers, remember, like, a lot of y'all probably don't remember that because a lot of new fans have just joined the Lakers, you know, have just become Laker fans. You know, our summer league games look like NBA playoff games. Like, like I told y'all, I was here during the worst moments. And I'm going to say this. They always like, oh, LeBron got y'all the first seed. And I'm like, of course. Like, you add Anthony Davis to that, of course, you're going to have tons of success. And they'll say, well, LeBron James brought Anthony Davis over. Okay, well, all right. Well, let's see if and it's not just about him getting Anthony Davis. Let's see what he does in terms of keeping Anthony Davis here. Let's see if Anthony Davis stays. Let's see how it plays out. You know, we've seen what LeBron James done last season without Anthony Davis and you have fans like oh well LeBron James had the Lakers at a fourth seed they had the fourth seed before LeBron was injured I said bro that was in late December early January let's talk about the facts you know the Rockets were the 11th seed around that time last year and finished fourth in the West you know so LeBron James still had plenty of time to carry the Lakers to the playoffs you know after he got injured remember he says he's activating playoff mode y'all remember that remember that comment he made playoff mode activated or something like that and I'm just paraphrasing I think you know Zion Williamson in his rookie season who missed the entire first half of the season. You know, he's basically carrying the exact same team, the exact same team that LeBron James had last year. The same roster, same players. He's carrying the same exact players to an AFC right now in his rookie season. You know, he was injured longer than LeBron. The Lakers were still in playoff hunt because I remember they had beat, I think, the, you know, the, the New Orleans Pelicans at that time. And they still had a chance to get into the playoffs. So it's no excuses. Like, they make so many excuses. LeBron James should even agree at this point that he isn't a real Laker at this time. And he has to accept that. And fans have to accept it as well. Maybe that will change. You know, he's by far a real cat. Michael Jordan isn't a real wizard. And the list goes on and on. And lastly, what he said about Kobe Bryant was ultimately true. Was was just so true. It's just facts. And I'm going to say this. I did a top 10 players list, I think, a year or two ago. And I had MJ at one and I had Kobe at two. And I promise you, I promise you that if I hear one person in the media outlet, you know, anybody in the mainstream media, any media pundit, sports analyst, the list goes on. A YouTuber, whoever it is out there. You know, if you had Kobe Bryant below the top five or top seven, even if you change, if you had Kobe in your top 15, you know, I heard people say Kobe is top 15, top 10. He's not above Tim Duncan and all these other players, right? If you change that since the situation has happened, if you all of a sudden has just put, have just put Kobe Bryant in your top five, I will no longer I would no longer respect your opinion. I would no longer take your basketball opinion seriously. And I just won't respect it. Keep that same energy that you had when he was still walking around here. But anyway, y'all let me know what y'all think. Like I said, I agree with Stefan Marbury. Y'all get in that comment box. Like, share, subscribe. I'm out.